after he returns, there will be a thousand years. We don't know. We don't. I don't think it is. Uh, I, when we study Revelation, the numbers are real symbolic. A lot of twelves, lots of sevens, lots of forties. But six six six, the mark of the beast. It's a perversion of the complete number seven seven seven. Um, so the pre premillennials believe that Jesus Christ will return and will have a thousand years of peace on earth, after which the world will be recreated. Postmillennials believe that, and this was real popular after World War II in our country, that the humans, Christians in particular, will work alongside the whole, through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, and establish a thousand years of peace. And what happens after the thousand years of peace? If this is premillennial, what does post mean? Christ comes at the end of that. That makes sense. The greatest generation tended to believe in this, that we can we can do it. We can establish with God's help a thousand years of peace, and then Jesus Christ will return. A millennialists believe that the thousand years is symbolic and it's the era of the church that we are Christ did resurrect he has shown himself to the church right he ascended to the father and so we, we experienced his coming uh, he'll come again but we've experienced his, his coming right then in the era of the church is what is what revelation talks about all these years where Satan's bound and one of the reasons I personally believe that is because Jesus had a conversation with the devil uh, out in the desert. You remember that? And the devil said, um, if, if you bow down to me, what does he get? What does Jesus get if he bows down to the devil? The world. He gets the world. He said G he knew why Jesus came was to come and claim what was rightfully his, the creation. And the devil said, I'll give it to you. You just have to make a deal with me. And the devil said, I'm, or Jesus said, I'm not going to make a deal with you. And if you read Mark chapter 3, so that was at the beginning, a few, uh, a little bit later on in his ministry, he says something that really stuck with me. Chap Mark 3, chapter uh, 20, uh, chap Mark chapter 3, verse 27, it begins, it says, but no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. This is when he's accused of using Satan to cast out Satan. And he said, that's crazy. He said, my goal is to come and tie up the strong man so I can plunder his house. And one image of the cross is Jesus is the bait the cross is a hook. And Lucifer, he bit down and took him all the way to the bottom of the sea. And Jesus did some strange maneuver, tied him up, and jumped at himself. And the Lucifer took the bait, hook, line, and sinker, which would be a fulfillment of Mark chapter 3. Jesus has tied up the strong man which would also be a fulfillment of Revelation chapter 20, where he's tied up, where he's bound. Uh, that's, what, that's my interpretation of that thousand years, is we are currently living in that time where, where he can snarl, he can shout, he can, uh, he, can, he, can, he can deceive and lie, but he can't touch us because he's bound. But according to Revelation, he'll be released uh, after he's released for a short time to wage war, he's utterly defeated. It says that after that, the dead are judged. Death and Hades give up their dead. That's when we get back to 1 Peter 3, 18 through 19, where we have this holding pattern, this, uh, this Monet, this, this wayside end. Hopefully you're in one of the, of the father's wayside ends. Uh, then you, you're given up. And what's interesting is, is that people who live in Hades live in the power of death and the spirit prison and in, the, in, and in paradise, wherever you're given up from, you all stand before the same throne. And so 
this may be where the Catholic Church gets their idea of purgatory. You get a chance uh, to, to, uh, to be judged by God. It says, after all that, it says the new creation comes. Um, Revelation 21 begins by saying, And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven, from God, as a bride prepared for her husband. And I heard a loud voice of the throne say, See, the home of God is now among mortals. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. For the first and the old things have passed away. Revelation 21 and 22 just goes on to describe what that looks like. I know that's a lot of information. We just flew through the book of Revelation in uh, just a few minutes here. Do you have any questions or comments? In Revelation, where it talks about the jewels and sapphires and everything, do you think that's what you can, some people, get the idea that the streets of gold and jewels and the and so Yeah, um, my, when I read Revelation, I see rivers. And trees. There's a tree that its roots go on both sides of it. It's so big, it, 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 it's got 12 giant roots and it, you know, it has all this fruit. It's got the fruit of life on it. Uh, it's the same tree that was in the garden. You know, there's two trees in the Garden of Eden that are mentioned. There's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and there's also the tree of life. Uh, this is that tree uh, that, that sprouts back up, uh, and, who's, and, it, and in whose leaves are, are an ointment for the healing of the nations. Uh, so it's consistently healing anything that might try to break. So the, the world's always healing itself. Um, and in addition to that, I, I think that there will be some, that the new creation will be so um, marvelous that we don't have words to describe. The, 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 it's, like, it's like the sea of glass. It's a sea, but it's not like a sea we've ever seen before. I've, I've, I mean, I've been to, y'all don't have, uh, you know, the wind always blows out here, so y'all probably have never seen a glassy sea. I've seen a calm day where it looks like it's glass, uh, but there's a holiness to the stillness, you know. So the language used in Revelation to describe both the horror and to describe the uh, the the, uh, the beauty, um, I think, is just to to give us words for things we don't have words for. Emeralds and sapphires. And there's a rainbow going around the Father's throne. The story ends where it begins. There's a river, there's a tree, there's people, there's God. They dwell together. There's no more mourning or crying or pain. It starts where it's, it stops where it started, recreated. And uh, that's the complete, according to Revelation. That's the complete. I know this is a monstrous topic. We didn't get into all the details of what the judgment looks like, or um, you know, where's my grandma right now? Um, but it's all going to be good. It's all good. Y'all have any questions, Brett? Maybe more than what time elapsed, but this the the heaven, the holding pattern, waiting, the place of waiting. For judgment in the new creation. Is that Gentile specific or are the Jewish people there as well? Or are they in their own holding? Is that Sheol? Sheol, it might be. Um, I've, uh, in fact, I asked, Jacob's got a Jewish friend, and I said, next time you talk to him or her, ask that, ask that question. I'm, I, I, I'm not close enough with a, with, with a Jew to ask. Um, what do you all believe? Now, I do know it's evolved over time so that the, the more uh, rabbinical teaching is that there is a life after death. I don't know what that looks like. Um, I'll never forget, I got a knock on, the, on my door by, a, by two guys on bicycles holding a book. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and um, the Mormons, and they had every, every answer. I mean, they, they somehow had Jesus in, in their back pocket. They knew everything. This is how many, this is the number of, uh, they call it sea turtles, celestial, terrestrial, and telestial, the levels of heaven, and only men can be in the top. Do you know that they are educated that they, each Mormon has to serve, male, female, 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 male, 
two years. It's impressive. I'm really impressed with their discipleship. But they were, I remember they went on through all the stuff, and I said, that's great. Uh, how do you get there? And he said, you have to believe in Jesus. I said, oh, good. And I said, so even if I don't believe in the details, I can still get there. And they're like, yeah. I was like, okay, we're good here. Because my, my point is, is whatever it's going to be, it's going to be. I just want to be there. Um, and, and so um, the, the, the presence of the, you know, the, the covenantal people, uh, uh, St. Paul writes in Romans 9 and, 12, uh, 9 and 10 that the Jewish covenant is fully intact, uh, that it's all sound, uh, that God does not revoke covenant. Um, and so, you know, if, if whatever, whatever benefits to the covenant they have with God, I, I'm excited to see that play out for them too. Um, but it's all, I mean, at the end of the day, what we find out is there's only one creation at the end. That, that, you know, that's my argument to the Mormons. There's only, there's only going to be one. Whether or not I'm Mormon, you say I get there either way, uh, I'll see you there if this is the case. Um, and so, for the, and I've, I've joked with uh, a few of you all about the, the, the Jewish uh, belief in the Messiahship that, you know, we are waiting for ours to return and they're waiting for the Messiah to come. And, when he gets here, let's just not ask if he's been here before. Do what? No. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's only going to be one creation. Uh, the the the, I, the belief in hell is to account for those who aren't part of that one creation. Uh, universalists say uh, that the will of the God, and it's in Colossians, the will of the Father is that all be saved, or, or 1 Corinthians, I mean, uh, uh, Philippians 1, uh, 2, 6 through 11, that every knee will bend, every tongue confess that Christ is Lord. Uh, those those uh, of us that, that don't believe, um, that believe that some people will ultimately always reject God, no matter what. Uh, hell has, hell was, was originally just the name of the place to deal with the fact that there's only one creation and other people have to be somewhere. Um, and then it kind of evolved into this awful place um, as opposed to just a non-existent sort of, I don't know. But the good news about uh, Christianity is you do not have to have a robust understanding of hell to be a Christian. <laughs> um, you just have to be a believer in Christ. So this was a big topic. And uh, we can study the book of Revelation in detail at one point, but this was more of a quick brush over the idea of the consummation. I invite comments, questions. You can come talk to me after this for any time. Um, but that's it. Bert? Father, we ask in Jesus' name for you to bless us and keep us. Um, we pray that we would get to experience you in your heavenly um, nature right now. We pray for those who've gone on before us who are, who are living in, in absolute full release, full peace. Um, we, pray for their, um, we pray for their knowing where they are, Lord, and knowing their, their experiences that, that we, would, we would press on toward the prize of your son, Jesus Christ. Um, we also pray that, that the work that we do here uh, as your church, as your people, as part of your story, um, would be claimed and used by you in your great mystery and your great strength to establish your kingdom, your new creation, uh, your reign here on earth. We pray that we would get to witness it. We especially pray for that generation of believers um, who will be called to, uh, to witness and, and hold fast to the faith um, as these things are occurring, uh, that you would bless, bless them and keep them safe um, and then keep their hearts sealed. We pray that the world would come to know you, and we pray that, that, uh, that the birth pains would not be too incredibly, incredibly hard or painful. Uh, but that we could, uh, your, your world would be in such a position, such a place to, to be eager to receive your reign. So in the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen.